Thank you. Um, again, I'm Joan Perry from uh, IISD, um, the Policy Research Institute located in the corner of Policy and Maine. Where'd you make it? Um, so I just like I'm going to speak primarily about uh, adaptation uh, to the impacts of climate change. Um, with a focus on what's going on here in Manitoba, and um, my some people will say that, um, or there's historically been this um, debate about whether or not you should actually talk about adaptation um, because it may distract from a focus on mitigation and uh, reducing the amount of greenhouse gases that we are emitting. At this point in time, I think it's widely accepted that the two conversations need to be happening simultaneously. Um, we need to see, as Dan has said, a really strong, deep reduction in the amount of greenhouse gas emissions, the amount of carbon dioxide, the amount of methane um, the, that is being emitted into the atmosphere through things like our transportation systems, our energy systems, how it is we grow our food, the type of uh, waste um, uh, production systems that we have. Um, but even if we were to uh, end all greenhouse gas emissions today, there will still be locked into the climate system a process of change. We will still be seeing a rise in temperatures, we'll still be seeing changes in our precipitation patterns, and as a result of that, we have no choice but to now to start to think about how to we cope with these changes that are inevitable, while also trying to minimize the degree to which change will be taking place in the future. So I thought I would um, begin by just sort of giving a bit of a brief overview of what we mean by adaptation, some of the sort of core ideas, speak a bit about uh, what it is that's going on in within the province of Manitoba, what the government is currently initiating, what their commitments are in terms of um, adapting to the impacts of climate change, and then um, a bit about sort of maybe more some where there's a bit need for a bit more work and some of the barriers that need to be overcome. So when we talk about adaptation to climate change, there's a sort of a standard definition, which is that adaptation is involves Actions people take in response to or in anticipation of projected or actual changes in climate to reduce adverse impacts or to take advantage of emerging opportunities. So there's two parts of this um, definition that I'd like to sort of highlight. One is the fact that it's talking about taking actions in response to an anticipated future. As humans, we have always adapted to the changes, the climatic changes that we have seen. We've been through the Little Ice Age, we've moved from different parts of the world, we have been very good at adapting to different climatic conditions. But often, we adapt in response to the circumstances that we see ourselves in. With climate change adaptation, we're adapting to what we see in the future. And so it's about trying to anticipate what the climate is going to be like. Uh, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, and building a society that will be well placed to deal with that um, climate of the future. The second part of the, the definition talks about the need to take, to react to the adverse impacts and to take advantage of emerging opportunities. Typically, when we're talking about climate change adaptation, we talk about the impacts, the potential for greater um, prospects for drought the reduced availability of water, um, heavy, greater percentage of heavy rainfall events, these adverse impacts. But we also should probably be talking a bit more about the opportunities. Change is going to come, and as much as we can't, we want to minimize the change, we should potentially be talking more about what, the, what opportunities are created through those changes. What Part of the rationale for doing that is the fact that Talking about opportunities is more exciting and interesting. <laughs> it's also a way of getting people on board. That by talking about what the changes are going to be and how it is that we can deal with them, you're creating a vision for a new society, a new way of living. How is it that we can maintain those core things that are important to us within a new structure? And what are the opportunities that we might want to do to restructure our society to take advantage of this, to achieve that uh, change? Um, the second thing, or the third thing about um, climate change adaptation is that we, when we talk about climate mitigation, we need to think about 
what's going on in China, what's going on in the United States and South America. Um, when we're talking about adaptation, it's very much a local phenomenon. How it is that the climate changes is, is local. How it is that we are going to be able to adapt to those changes, what capacities we'll need, what our circumstances are, is very much local. So the two are very much inter, um, interdependent, but they're also very different from one another. So this leads to the question of what it is that the role of government can be in a process in which the actions primarily take place at the local level. So the government of Manitoba has recognized that we need to be doing um, what we can to adapt to the impacts of climate change and has put in place a commitment that they call the adaptation pathway. And there's three main components of that pathway. The first one is looking at an assessment of the risk that climate change poses by, to government operations. How is it essentially the government can get their own house in order? The second stage is going to be looking at looking at the risk assessment for the province as a whole. And the third is looking at development of a climate change adaptation strategy and plan. At this point in time, the province is very much at the initial stages of their adaptation pathway. They've only begun to really understand what the potential impacts of climate change could be for the province. Um, I, Steen, and, and Danny, and the University of Winnipeg, we're currently in the process of creating something called um, a climate atlas. It's the first atlas for the province. It's really um, documenting how the climate has changed historically within the province and what the projected changes <coughs> may be in the future. And we're hoping, I was kind of sad when Dan said he wasn't doing a PowerPoint presentation. I'm like, sure, <laughs> he's going to have all these great graphics of this work that we've done. <laughs> So, um, but anyways, it's a first step, because, and um, the fact that the Manitoba doesn't even have this basic information yet, specifically for the province, is um, sort of an indicator of the degree to which there's a need for more interest and um, concern about the need to adapt to the uh, climate change within um, the province. Um, the province is also actively involved in something called the Prairie Climate, sorry, the Prairie Regional Adaptation Collaborative, which is now the secretary for which is now housed at the University of Winnipeg. And the the PRAC, the, uh, the Prairie Regional Adaptation Collaborative, is um, an effort by Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba to work together to try and understand the, what the risks of climate change are, to share lessons learned and to come up with some sort of uh, support for another in the, the adaptation efforts across the prairies. Uh, and there's, uh, the province is involved in several other things and possibly we can talk about them afterwards. But the, one of the major things is there's still a lot that needs to be done in the province. One is it's, uh, it's basically making people more aware about the potential impacts of climate change and also about what actions they can take in order to um, address those impacts. And some of the ones that I'd like to talk about are things like integrated watershed management. How is it that we can strengthen integrated watershed management across the prairies so that we can better manage the water resources that we have and therefore be better able to manage um, when there's um, less water available and during times of drought, when there's more excess water available in a time of flood. How is it we can sort of even out that process? So that could be doing things, involving things like, how is it that we make sure that the wetlands we have on prairies are maintained, restored, and enhanced? Um, we can also be looking at um, greater focus on the urban centers within the province. How is it that we green our urban environment in a way that will simultaneously reduce greenhouse gas emissions while also adapting to the impacts of climate change. There's some synergies that can be achieved in that regard. Energy efficiency, um, green roofs, for example, can have both um, mitigation and adaptation benefits. At the same time, we can have some um, potential for conflict. Um, densification is really good for mitigation, but uh, it's not so good for adaptation if we were looking at the potential for a greater number of heat, uh, hot, days within the cities, kind of traps all the air. So how is it that we come up with the balances between those? This is some of the key issues that we're going to be having to look at going forward. Um, and uh, finally, 
I thought I'd talk about um, barriers. So, I would say that the number one barrier at this point in time uh, for adaptation really is awareness, concern, and an understanding of the economic costs of not doing anything right now. Um, we have just, in 2011, we had a flood on, uh, that cost the province $1.2 billion. What happens in this province if we start to have that type of flood happening more regularly? This province's economy cannot absorb that kind of cost. So what is it that we can do now that will cost less, that will lead us to avoiding those, those types of um, consequences in the future? Um, and uh, the second one, I guess, is just making sure that there's enough information available. I mean, maybe because I'm a researcher, living at the research institute, I think information is really very important. But I think we need to really have that common set of understanding what type of change is going to be happening and making it available to the public, to private companies who need to be planning for investment in infrastructure. How is it we know that our bridges are going to be um, with, able to withstand the, the climate of the future? making it available to the municipalities, making it available to all of us as we um, go forward and making decisions about our future. That's it. And last, thank all of you for coming up to our events and uh, participating and being involved. It uh, means the world to the organizers and those of us who put it together, the people that are interested in talking about public policy in this province, how important it is to them all. We invite you to come back here next month for the state post-secondary education in Manitoba. Um, to the International Climate Change Discussion at Nellie Robinson um, next month as well. And uh, our year in politics wrap up in June back here. So uh, please join us and uh, thank you again for coming this evening. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>